Good morning. Today is Monday, August 28th, 2017. This is The Daily Mix TV. You know, it's been quite a few busy days since we last spoke. As I indicated on Friday, The Daily Mix TV is going through some changes. We're shifting into a single broadcast per day, but that single show is going to include more content, more stories, advice, and information for you. The amount of feedback we've gotten from you guys has just been incredible, and I really, really appreciate you watching. It's only been eight weeks since we started doing this, which is just mind-blowing considering how many stories we've done. But you're going to see the changes that are coming down the pipe, so let's get on with today's hits. Snapchat has a drinking problem, and it can only lead to further degradation of the brand. Spirits brands are really hesitant to advertise on Snapchat because the app can't verify ads are only being served to people 21 and older. It's got an overwhelmingly younger audience than its counterparts. So in 2013, Snapchat put in an age gate. An age gate is when you have to enter your age when you create an account. It's done specifically to protect younger users from spirits, brands, and nudity, and those kinds of things. So when they did this, they took the step to actually help spirits advertisers to be able to use their platform, but they left a big hole in their plan. Brands can limit age, uh, ads served to people age 21 and older, but those users can still send snaps with sponsored geo filters and lenses to their underage friends. That's a big problem. There's no way to verify the recipient's age. You see, as a spirits brand, you're mandated by law to ensure your marketing efforts are targeting 70% audience of LDA and above, legal drinking age. Essentially, that means that Instagram, which does have the tools for brands to ensure they're compliant, is gonna win out in the spirits sector. And that's a lot of ad dollars that Snapchat's leaving on the table. The other issue at hand, which we said is, Snapchat is still got a very young audience, whereas Instagram tends to skew older. Plus, Instagram has stories now, so it's not like brands are missing out on that kind of trigger component. Instagram also has other benefits for brands like a larger active user base and more discoverability. The problem for Snapchat continues to be a lack of innovation and a lack of evolution. I hope they change their ways because pretty soon it's gonna be too late. Now. Get ready to update your watch list, guys, because Hulu is about to add a raft of new shows to its streaming library. They've just done a deal with 20th Century Fox Television Distribution that allows their catalog to grow by more than 3,000 episodes of classic series like MASH, NYPD Blue, and The Mary Tyler Moore Show, as well as recent hits like How I Met Your Mother, Bones, and Glee. So there's a lot of new shows, as you can see from the list that's streaming in front of you, that are coming onto the platform over the next few weeks. Now, it looks like Conor McGregor wasn't the only one knocked out over the weekend. The movie business took several hits to the head and several body blows this weekend when its revenues tanked to $65 million, which is the lowest it's been on a weekend since September of 2001. With no new releases this past weekend, the hitman's bodyguard raked in $10 million while Annabelle Creation pulled in just over $7 million. Though there were some marked special events as the Mayweather uh, McGregor stunt that was beamed into 481 theaters, as well as a 4K 3D conversion of James Cameron's Terminator 2 Judgment Day hit theaters at the same time. Now, while this time of year is often soft, this is serious because it does show the lowest revenue in 16 years. Now, could this have been a fluke? Sure. But I have to say the lack of originality, creativity, and the constant need to reinvent, reboot, reimagine everything has left a bad taste in many, goers, many moviegoers' mouths as well. But there is some hope on the horizon with releases like Kingsman The Golden Circle, Blade Runner 2049, which is a sequel to the legendary flick, Justice League, Thor Rag Ragnarok, uh, Six Billion Dollar Man, and Star Wars The Last Jedi coming through the end of the year. Movie houses need to start picking up the pace, and frankly, studios need to start getting a little more original with the releases that they put out if they want to continue to capture the amount of money that, frankly, they're asking consumers to spend. Now, speaking of Star Wars, we're still a few months away from the next hotly anticipated chapter of the saga, but Mastige retailer Target has a whole other plan in store for you. It's called Force Friday 2, and it happens this Friday. It's a Lucasfilm event. They do it all over the country. It's the day when new merchandise inspired by the film launches across the globe. So 
you're going to want to be at Target for the big reveal this year. They're unveiling hundreds of new toys, collectibles, apparel, books, and more. There are going to be a lot of fun activities for kids and adults alike, including the chance to unlock characters and digital content through Star Wars Find the Force, which is an augmented reality experience taking place this weekend. Now, I love promotions like this. It ties everything up with a neat little bow. It brings the experience of the films that have excited generations of fans right into retail and then into your home. It also hits all those generations as touch points. As an example, baby boomers and Gen Xers love going in store and playing with new merchandise and looking at how things are positioned and that kind of stuff. Millennials and Generation Z, they've got this penchant for you know new technology, augmented reality, the notion of a treasure hunt, such as what AR really does provide in a situation like this. It's a brilliant promotion, but then again, what do you expect from Target and Lucasfilm? So did you guys watch the Game of Thrones season finale last night? Even if you aren't a fan of the show or you've been binge watching for weeks to catch up and we won't judge, I promise, because I binge watch myself. The truth of the matter is you at least know people who've been salivating and wait for the season finale. Well, Arby's had those customers in mind when they honored the series and helped to celebrate by selling giant smoked turkey legs. Available only yesterday, the turkey legs were sold in nine select locations corresponding to the regions of Westeros. From Fargo, North Dakota, which is basically the U.S. version of Winterfell in, in Arby's mind, to Los Angeles, which is basically like High Garden because it's the land of bountiful gold and riches. Now, promotions like this are designed to drive a lot of noise in a short period of time when tied to a popular property like Game of Thrones. Now, while I applaud Arby's for this, they should have gone wider to more markets in order to capture as much attention as they could. Sadly, guys, a press release and some social is just not sufficient enough to promote an endeavor like this, especially when it's a franchise like Game of Thrones, which is so popular. This was a miss in my opinion. I'm sorry, guys, but you know, as much fun as I think this was, it was so limited, it actually ended up hurting itself rather than helping. Now, Last week, we talked about the immediacy of Amazon rolling out changes to its Whole Foods acquisition once the Federal Trade Commission cleared the way for the acquisition. Well, Bezos and company has wasted no time. As a matter of fact, this is the fastest rollout of new programming and ownership I have ever seen in an acquisition situation. Amazon's already implementing lower pricing across the Whole Foods banner, including many, many popular produce and meat products. Now, also, Amazon is going to install Amazon lockers in select Whole Food Market stores, affording Whole Foods a click and collect offering. This is amazing. Customers can have products shipped from Amazon.com to their local Whole Foods Market store for pickup, or they can send returns back to Amazon during a trip to the store. Now, when the integration of Amazon Prime into the Whole Foods Market point of sale system is complete, Prime members will actually receive special savings and in-store benefits. This is incredible. It's so fast. I, I literally have never seen anything like this. The two companies are going to be investing in additional areas within the store and out of the store over time, including in merchandising and logistics. It's basically going to enable lower prices for Whole Foods Market starting today. Now, Whole Foods is going to be offering lower prices already on a selection of best-selling staples across its store with much more to come. Customers will be able to enjoy lower prices on products like Whole Foods Butter, Organic Gala and Fuji Apples, uh, creechy, uh, Creamy and Crunchy Almond Butter, Fair Trade Bananas, Organic Avocados, even Organic Rotisserie Chicken. Also beginning today, Whole, Food, uh, Whole Foods Market's healthy and high quality private label products, including 365 Everyday Value, Whole Foods Market, Whole Paws, and Whole Catch is going to be available through Amazon.com, Amazon Fresh, Prime Pantry, and Prime Now. I got to say, for an acquisition that was only announced mere months ago, they're already rolling in programming and integration. There's a reason why Amazon is the big dog in e-commerce. So if I were Walmart and several other e-commerce players in the mix, I would be very concerned with what's about to happen because God knows Jeff Bezos, he certainly has a few more surprises up his sleeve. Now, now in the days after 9-11, Hurricane Katrina and Superstorm Sandy, we all saw what it means to really 
be an American. In all three instances, people of all races, colors, and creeds came together for the common good to help others through these tragedies. Now, we've all seen what's happening in Texas with the historic and horrific Hurricane Harvey. It is, it's been recorded as the first major storm of its kind to hit the continental United States in more than a decade. Record rainfalls north of 50 inches are projected by this week's end as millions of Americans are suffering with flooding and record destruction in the Lone Star State. There have already been at least five deaths related to Harvey, with many more projected. But help is on the way. The governor, Greg Abbott, has uh, activated 4,000 National Guard members. FEMA is on the ground, and the American Red Cross has already dispatched crews to help. Now, here's where the feel-good part really comes in. HEB, which is a Texas grocer, they've been on the road since Harvey hit, providing food and disaster relief to storm-ravaged areas with their HEB disaster convoy. From New York City, the NYPD and the FDNY has sent 120 officers and firefighters to help with the storm because during Superstorm Sandy, Texas sent their own to come to New York to help us with the recovery. And there are dozens of American companies donating money and supplies to help with the record rainfalls and storm recovery like Caterpillar, ExxonMobil, Google, Humana, Lowe's, uh, Western Union, and Walmart. And there are tons more, guys. When it comes to situations like this, please remember it doesn't matter what your political affiliation is. It doesn't matter who the president of the United States is. It matters that we are all Americans. We're all human beings. Why does it take a tragic situation like this to make people remember that? The next time you decide to post something about a Democrat or a Republican or an independent, take a step back and remember, we're all in this together, guys. Surely there's a better way to settle our differences and remind the world that we are the United States of America. Godspeed to everyone in Texas. If you want to help, please consider donating to the American Red Cross for disaster relief and recovery. My name is Sean Patrick Hillman. I'm the CEO of Hill Story Marketing. I'm also the editor-in-chief of The Daily Mix TV. We would love to hear from you, so please email us at thedailymixtv at gmail.com. Have a great rest of your day, guys. We'll catch you tomorrow.